I'm using this software OBS that is for Linux. I'm using Ubuntu just for to this test that is nice because I can make a webcam in this part I guess of the camera and and I can also pr uh, display the the PDF of the talk that I will give on on this conference in Taub. So I guess it's a nice ways to to keep a record of the talks in in this in my YouTube channel and then also to to show what I'm doing every every time that I give a speech. So let's start with this talk. It's basically the the title of the talk is Relative Neutrino Mass Generation from Wind Dark Matter. My name is Roberto Linedos and I'm postdoc at the Instituto de Física Corpuscular in Valencia. And just to go fast, the this is the outline of the talk. Basically I will start with an introduction and about dark matter and neutrinos. Then I will describe the model and the all the nice features that the model has and to the to arrive to the end with the conclusions. This work um, in the talk that I'm presenting is based on a paper that we have done with collaborators at, at in Valencia in with the title Winter Matter as Relative Neutrino Mass Messengers. So everybody we are here in this conference for talking one of the sessions is about dark matter and we are pretty sure that the presence of this dark matter that is supported by many many different type of observations like dynamics of cluster of galaxies structure formation cmb anisotropies and baryon acoustic oscillation the relic abundance of this dark matter is around 26 percent of the energy budget of the universe so this is a clear strong signal that it the presence that is there but is we are not sure about which type of matter is uh, is making this dark matter the most common uh, candidate for that are so-called wimp from weakly interacting massive particles that they have a very nice feature that are a big bang thermal relic that means that they uh, they are created at the same time that the rest of the particles of the standard model and little by little like the here in this plot that is in this part, this is the abundance versus the the temperature in the sense that to the right the temperature is decreasing when the there is the big bang and all the particles are in a thermal bath that are behaving all uh, together because they are in thermal equilibrium and there is a moment in which this the population of dark matter decouples from the from the thermal bath because the uh, interaction strength drop too much and then they remain freezing freeze during the the rest of the evolution of the universe so these particles are very nice in the sense that they are uh, big bang thermal relics and in order to explain the the relic abundance that we estimate for the observation the interaction strength has to be of the order of the electroweak uh, scale uh, i would say that from the order of 1p pico barn times the speed of light and also the mass range for these particles and for this mechanism that the mechanism to make all the the correct estimation is has to be particles of the order of the gb tb range so more specific for the case of WIMPs, we have that to, to reproduce the relic abundance, the interaction strength of the annihilation cross section at the time of the free salt has to be of the order 3 times 10 to the minus 26 centimeter cube divided by second. And the temperature in which dark matter decouples from the thermal bath is usually of 1 20th of the mass of the particle. So this is a very generic feature of these WIMPs that can be achieved by many different type of particles or models, uh, candidates that are proposed. So, on the other side, we have that with all these features, we can we can have uh, different strategies for looking for dark matter. One is the indirect detection that you s wait for annihilation of dark matters in celestial bodies, like the galactic center, for instance, and observe what are the products of this annihilation, like uh, gamma rays, neutrinos, or cosmic rays. On the other hand, here in at Earth, you can see the defect of direct detection. I mean, a strategy called direct detection in which you have the scattering of dark matter on detectors that are uh, cryogenic detectors or crystals, in which uh, the energy, the recall energy, is observed in order to establish what is our interaction rate that has this dark matter with normal particles, with baryonic matter or electronic matter. On the other side, we have the production of dark matter in, in colliders particle colliders. In this case, two standard model particles are, are 
uh, scatters and produces dark matter particles or, or particles that are related with dark matter, like in a hidden sector. And uh, to final is the astrophysical process in which you analyze the case of interaction of dark matter with the dark matter. Usually it could be this at the early, in the very beginning of the early universe, at the formation of the CMB or even before. And no matter what is the strategy that we are looking, all of these detection strategies are related with themselves via the how you estimate or how you reproduce the relic advantage of dark matter, which is what WIMPs make are very attractive, like an idea. So, for the other side, we have neutrinos, in which we already know that neutrinos in the standard model of particle physics are predicted and it has mass, are massless. Uh, that means my, uh, zero mass. However, the observation of oscillation or neutrino oscillation indicate that this particle in, in fact has mass of the order of the sub electron volt scale, let's say. So for instance, we have the, in this global feed, we have, we have figured out which are the more or less the best mixing angles and different masses of these neutrinos. But however, no matter the, the evidence that we have, we need to include, this is a clear signature that we have a physics beyond the standard model. And we need to require to draw a model to explain this neutrino mass spectrum and the mix second. So the typical way to, to achieve this is with the Weimer operator in which the, um, in the standard model, the lepton number is, is violated by two units. This is required to, ex to produce mass, masses to neutrinos and mixing angles. So, we, we mod our model is based on another idea, the one that is called excotogenic models, in which neutrinos acquire mass via one loop interaction, in which there are kind of symmetry here inside the loop, and for that reason they, they, got, they acquire mass. It's not that in, in the typical CSO scenarios in which the masses is acquired at three level, in this case it's acquired by one loop. You can see, see this work from the Orastrep portal in which they analyze a very different type of uh, the connection between neutrino masses in this kind of scotogenic with dark matter. But anyway, we are focusing on the scotogenic models, models that basically are two types in which uh, both are Ernest Ma is the main uh, author of this work, in which you have two different particles inside. In one case, you have that the mediator in the in the loops is a fermion singlet, like a right-handed neutrino, but with an extra symmetry that protect that this happened to one loop uh, three level. I mean, and also in both cases you require a scalar S2 doublet that is similar to a Higgs, but with a with a extra symmetry. In the th in the second model of this scotogenic uh, model is the presence of a fermion S2 triplet that is here in the loop, and it is going to give you a different phenomenology. Phenomenology. So, if the dark matter among all of these particles is the lightest, is the scalar, the neutral part of this scalar doublet. So the phenomenology phenomenology of this model is practically the same that the case of inner Higgs dark matter. Because most of these particles, since they are one loop, they don't take a special role during the for the dark matter phenomenology. However, if the lightest of this particle is the singlet fermion, singlet fermion, you expect that the uh, the signature of this dark matter is going to be that to annihilate mainly to or exclusively to leptons. The direct detection is not longer possible at three level; it's just only via loops. And the dark matter mass, more or less, is has to be light, less than 50 GeV, roughly speaking. In the other case, in the other model, if the F if the neutral component of this triplet is the dark matter, is the lightest particle, then you have that the annihilation is mainly to gauge boson, W boson. Direct detection is also via loops, but due to the mass, this very a degenerated case between the charge component and the singlet and the neutral component, you have that your jar matter mass has to be of the order of the 2.7 TeV. 
due to the coannulation with the charge component of this triplet are the one that dominate and draw control all the relic abundance at the interior universe. So anyway, our model it was to take some feature for both of these because uh, if you can make a model with these two particles but you don't gain anything, you have to add like, something else. In this case, what we add is a, a scalar triplet without this uh, set two symmetry in order to allow the mixing between the singlet and the triplet. So in this case also the neutrino masses are generated at one at loop level in the same case that in this cotogen but due to the this uh, neutral component of the triplet acquired a PEF, a packing distinct value that this produced that it mixes with the Higgs, standard model Higgs and give a new phenomenology but also the matter candidate this time is going to be a mix between singlet and triplet. So for instance, just to show it in a simple way, these are the uh, gauge eigenstates and these in the right are the, the mass eigenstate. So in that sense, the or two singlet and triplet component, the neutral component, now there are going to be two fermions, Majorana fermions, the triplet and the Higgs, standard model Higgs is going to be now two new scalars in which one of those has to be very like very similar to the Higgs itself so with 125 GB mass and a mixing angle that is rather small and the charge component of the triplet now there is still the same a charge component and also the charge component of the triplet of the in the scalar triplet is now a charge scalar so in that sense this framework this picture is very similar and give a phenomenology very sili similar to the electroweekinos or the case, for instance, in some uh, um, uh, cases to the Wino dark matter. So the mass spectrum, it doesn't, it's not so difficult to see that the charge component of the triplet, the mass of the charge component of the triplet is going to be the, the mass of the also the charge, the new charge particles. The neutral, the mass of the neutral is going to be a mix between the mass of the triple the Lagrangian term the mass in the Lagrangian and the mass of the in the Lagrangian of the singlet plus a component that depends of how they are mixed that are related with the Yukawa of the mixing and the bed of the omega. So for simplicity we define this parameter chi he I'm sorry that set what is the mass splitting between the triplet and the mass of the dark matter. If this this value is very small that means that our dark matter is mainly triplet and if it is very large that means that it's very mainly singlet. So <coughs> this is gonna set this is gonna depend on everything about how are the, the parameter space that we are choosing in the model. So for instance which are the conditions that we have to take into account for this is for instance the relic abundance and for instance, here are the, all the processes that participate in the model for calculation of the early universe and also for in the detection. So all the calculation we did with micro omega. And for instance, in the case of annihilation that are re relevant for in the detection, we know we can see that for instance, the annihilation between the neo the singlet component is going to give us leptons, signaling leptons. The annihilation between the the triplet component is going to give us annihilation into W and the mix uh, annihilation between the triplet and the singlet is going to give us quark because the mediator is going to be the, the new scalar, the triplet and the Higgs. And coannihilation effects are very interesting also because due to the difference of mass between the triplet and the, si and the, the triplet, the charge part of the triplet that the charge part is the neutral part of the triplet it will give us that when this state are degenerate these processes start to to control the situation in the when we calculate the, the relic abundance because the annihilation between the charge components is are strong enough that is fixing the dark matter mass to this value but of course if our dark matter is mainly singlet then this process is the one that is going to Participating, participate in the coannulation processes, and also we are going to have mainly 
this type of process. So then uh, now we, we see the after doing this scan in microomegas how it is behave the annihilation cross section versus the dark matter mass. We have here the wimp canonical wimp cross section three times ten to the minus twenty six, and we can see different ra uh, range. This is the very long range in annihilation cross section. The blue dots stand mainly for dark matters that are mostly singlet. The kind of orange green color is the one that is a mixed state. And the reddish color are the ones that uh, are mainly triplet. We can see that clearly we, def we define different parts. This is because, for instance, this part in which is mainly singlet, the constraint, for instance, from LEP, in which we cannot have charged particle lower than roughly 100 GeV, are forcing that the mass of the triplet in the, the, the term in the, in the Lagrangian of the, the M sigma is going to be larger than 100 GeV. Also, the mass of the charge uh, component of the W that are in the model. So, for that reason, most lighter matter tend to be singlet, but also there is a mixed state because of the decoannulation are not longer efficient if you are talking about in a mixed state. And when you are in the range of the TV, you have this point here, that is when you have a pure triplet. And here are all the effects of related with the coannulation and stuff like this. So this is the case of indirect detection. The case of direct detection, the same points give us this type of shape in which we have, for instance, here are the constraint of of xenon 100 of 2012 and we can see that this model because the processes are happens to three level we can achieve a, a, a spin independent cross section that are in the range of the of the effect of the constraint so this is nice because this model could be testable also with direct detection uh, experiment so how to see this? For instance, the part that is mainly single, the cross-section tend to go down because dark matter cannot scatter on on the quarks of the nuclear nuclear nucleons of the of the detector. When there is a mixed state, is when it's more probable to happen because the mediator is like a Higgs light. And when this very this is similar to the case of Wino. Also, you can have kind of resonant case in which you might expect to to see something. So how to see these processes, like I said before. Okay, when you have pure triplet or pure singlet, this is gonna be the the leading term that is only to one loop mediated by the photon and the self boson on the nucleon of the detector. But since most of the cases when it's mixed state, now we are gonna have an omega, the component, uh, mixing with the Higgs and then the quarks, that this could be very strong. So, to the end of the talk is basically the conclusion the, that this neutrino mass mechanism connected with dark matter is a very interesting idea. In this model, the signal, the dark matter signal couples to lepton, quarks, and W and gauge boson, like it would be in a generic WIMP scenario. That is very nice because usually models with dark matter and neutrinos mostly ca uh, there's annihilation signal going mostly to leptons, in the case of fermion dark matter. Uh, direct detection cross-section now are lighter enough to be testable, higher enough, sorry, to be testable in current uh, future experiments like lax of xenon one ton. And because of this uh, gauge interaction that now the dark matter m might have, could be also possible to search at colliders because there are some similarities to electroweakness. So this is the talk, and for instance, some publicity. This is the uh, website that we are having, taking care in Valencia. I'm taking care that is called Dark Matter Hunters. That is a. We are trying to collect a lot of resources about dark matter. Especially, we are posting about what is happening in archive every day about dark matter. Maybe uh, because it's so a interdisciplinary field that is impossible to follow track of all what is happening in different areas like astrophysics or particle physics, nuclear physics. So in this website you can find 
try to find updated information about that. We have a version in Facebook and a version in Twitter. And these are the address that you can see. And also I want to tell you about this other project that we I have with many other postdocs and professors from in Latin America, that is the Latin American webinars on physics, that is a cycle of web seminars in which we are trying to see what we are doing all physicists we are trying to have very interesting talk like when some people from Fermi gave us some talk after they released this analysis about the dwarf galaxies from dark energy survey or the what was the last news about the MS2 experiment uh, after the release of the new data of antiprotons and electron positrons or other talk more theoretical related with neutrinos and LHC or or projects that are happening in, in South America, in Latin America. So if you want to give a talk, because you have to talk to me or contact us here in the description and here the information and and for my side I would say that it's all here. You have the conclusion again and thank you very much. So this is the end of the talk. More or less this is what I'm gonna say today in this conference. And if you are interested in the topics you can check the the Dark Matter Hunters of the Latin American Webinar Physics, or also by the slides of the talk. You can enter to the website. I'm going to put the description. I'm going to put all the links in the description of the video.